for joining me, Redhead to Redhead. So for this episode, it's going to be what's in your bags. <laughs> and um, I often get asked by the people that I ride with the most often anyway, um, about all of the gear and equipment that I carry on a regular basis. And to be honest, really the only reason I can carry as much as I do is because I ride two bigger bikes. I have two baggers, um, a Triumph Thunderbird Storm, and the one I'm gonna work with today, the uh, 2020 Harley Street Glide Special. So one of the things I wanted to start with is this first saddle bag in which I typically carry all of my riding gear for whatever weather and temperatures I'm probably going to encounter. I will fully admit I have an entire bedroom closet full of gear and it's really just a lot of trial and error unfortunately for women who ride to find things that work well for you. Um, I think we're all familiar with, at least women are, who ride the shrink it and pink it mentality of taking men's riding gear and just making it smaller. And unfortunately, that just doesn't really work very well. And for myself, personally, I'm almost 5'10", so I'm on the taller side. I'm not a skinny, skinny girl. So um, it, it tends to be difficult to find gear that I really feel comfortable in and well protected. Oftentimes women's riding gear in general is just kind of cheap quality or it may be more expensive than even the men's gear and it's got, you know, the frilly flowers and all that kind of thing, the sparkles. Um, I'm not a sparkle girl myself, but um, I also tend to be an at get person. So I tend to wear all the gear all the time. And for those of you who don't, I pass no judgment on anyone who wants to ride without it. That's just my um, personal riding style and comfort level is I tend to ride <clears throat> with gear on most of the time. So the first thing I wanted to start with, and I'll post some comments down below on some of my personal favorite items that I've found over the years, and uh, certainly leave some comments for others if there are things that you have found well, brands, companies uh, that work well in supporting women riders as well. Um, with uh, International Female Ride Day coming up on May 7th, I thought this would be a good time to discuss some of this stuff. Unfortunately, it is May 1st here in Minnesota, and it is cold and misting and raining and crap out. So what better time to do a video for y'all? <clears throat> so let's start with this guy. We'll get into the bags here in just a second, but I wanted to show you a couple of my favorite jackets. So this one I tend to wear, this Speedy Women's Mesh. Um, I got it from Revzilla a number of years ago. I'm not sure if they make this exact one, but it's a phenomenal jacket. It, it comes with armor and um, it also, I believe, has a thermal liner and a rain uh, zip, a waterproof liner as well. As you can see, this one I tend to just throw all my patches on as I travel and collect things. This one I tend to wear more long distance. If I'm just riding in town, one of my favorite jackets, I was looking for it, I'm not sure where I put it at the moment, but uh, Merla Moto, M-E-R-L-A, Merla Moto, uh, I believe is an Australian woman-owned company. They make some really cool stuff. If you're more of a minimalist uh, when it comes to riding gear, they have some great denim uh, Dyneema jackets that are abrasion resistant, that are really well cut. Um, I believe they're making some changes to them. I'm gonna start adding some armor options, but they're they're really great if you want something just lightweight, little extra protection over maybe a tank top or a t-shirt. But um, this speedy jacket with the armor tends to be my go-to, especially for long distance travel in warmer months, which it's probably gonna be a while until I get to this guy. So we'll set this one aside. The one I wear probably, I don't know, 50% of the riding season, especially right now, um, is this jacket from, I think it's Moto Girl. And uh, my friend uh, has a company called Wind and Throttle that you can find online. And she sources all sorts of women's riding gear, primarily from women owned companies, and really is an awesome supporter of women in motorcycling, the women's motorcycle industry. But this one too comes with um, shoulder and elbow pads as well as back armor. I typically don't ride with the back armor in this one just because it is a fairly snug fit for me. So I can't get it in there comfortably without feeling like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Um, but it's got, um, you know, some expansion 
vents in the back, and it's just an overall really, really well made jacket. So that tends to be my go-to. A couple of items before we get in, especially this time of year, um, layers are probably your best friend, at least here in Minnesota they are. Uh, as my friends down in Florida call them, they're ranch pants, <laughs> or otherwise known as Carhartt bibs. Um, I got these a couple of years ago because they fit well over just my regular riding pants um, or jeans and boots and they provide enough of an insulated barrier that they really cut that wind and keep things nice and toasty warm while you're on the bike. Not to mention because they're heavy duty cotton, they're not gonna melt against the exhaust pipes. So that's something also to keep in mind when you're purchasing gear and we'll talk about rain gear here in just a second. Um, but make sure it's it's either made for motorcycling or is going to be safe for motorcycling because I've encountered a lot of gear that people buy for ATV use or something like that where you don't typically have your legs against a hot exhaust pipe for a long period of time. So these are really great. Here's a little hot tip for you. Carhartt bibs obviously can be fairly expensive. I found these on um, a, what do you call it, like a factory second site, and um, I can't figure out what's wrong with them, but somehow they didn't cut it and they ended up in the factory seconds for like half the price of what typical car bibs would be. For me, that's important because these aren't something I'm gonna wear very often, so I didn't wanna spend a ton of money on something, but I also wanted something that would keep me comfortable on those days where it's just, colder than I would prefer on the bike. I was out a couple Saturdays ago, it was 25 degrees. I was really comfortable with my heated um, jacket liner and these Carhartt bibs. Again, I could barely get my jacket zipped, <laughs> but um, it worked. So, all right, let's dive into, oh, one other thing. I am a huge, huge fan of full face helmets. Again, this is my personal preference. Um, I just got this Simpson modular helmet. I absolutely love it. Um, but, you know, I, I'm just more comfortable. I've had enough stuff kicked up off the road, uh, rubber from semi tires and things like that, giant June bugs. Obviously, that's a great way to learn some new uh, curse words <laughs> if you didn't already know enough. And, um, I am just a big fan of a full face helmet. So that is the one piece of gear that I never ride without. All right, now let's get into the bag here. Okay, so for me, gloves are a huge, <laughs> huge trial and error. Um, I think every woman I speak to has some issue with gloves and owns probably dozens of them in the effort just to find something that fits properly. In this bag alone, I probably have five pairs of gloves. I, I tend to kind of hoard gloves. Um, realistically speaking, with the start of the season, I've kind of just collected everything again and thrown it near my bike or on the bike. Um, but realistically, I usually travel with two pairs of gloves. I usually travel with a lightweight pair. Um, these are my two favorites. I've got a Harley mesh pair and um, this pair from Mouse House. They've got a little bit of padding in there, so they're, they're nice and helping prevent some of that fatigue, and they're just kind of a nice lightweight glove as well. Um, when it gets colder, again, wind and throttle, great place to find beautiful riding gloves that are also very, very functional. Um, these gloves here actually have knuckle guards in them and they are perforated leather. So I tend to wear these up until we get to about mid 60s, 70 degrees. Um, they're a little bit heavier duty and they're, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Really, really well made. So a few pairs of gloves. I think chaps are pretty self-explanatory, but um, these quite literally can save your hide in more way that, ways than one. Everyone has preference on these as well. Um, chaps for me have come in handy many times where, you know, we've been riding up into the mountains from lower elevations and I just needed to throw something on to cut that wind chill. Obviously they can help with road rash and things like that other than your derriere that is still left um, exposed. So chaps are pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Layers. Layers are super important. Um, you know, if there's anything you're going to carry on the bike, 
and you have you know either just a backpack or smaller saddle bags carry a couple of just general layers because being uncomfortable on the motorcycle really wears down your mental fatigue especially if you're on a longer distance ride um, if the better you can retain your body heat or if it's really hot in the summertime I do also have a cooling vest that you can soak in water that has come in so handy when we were in Utah last summer it was one of the hottest waves they'd had in the entire early fall I was not mentally prepared for that and that that really helped kind of refresh me and keep me going um, but I love just a, a lightweight zip up hooded flannel I like the hood on the back too it comes in handy I've actually found that this Simpson helmet in particular sits a little higher and so my neck is often exposed I have shorter hair so um, you know I want to make sure one my neck is protected from Sun and two that I'm staying warm so something like that just a simple zip up flannel throw it in your bag keep it in there easy layer um, <laughs> people are often jealous of my my heated gear and this is a men's Harley heated suit that I have. I don't usually use the pants. The vest I've found is often enough to keep blood circulating and keep me warm. Um, but check out places like Facebook Marketplace or online um, sales forums. That's where I found mine at just a steal of a deal because obviously those two also can start to add up. Um, speaking of heated gear, one of the big questions that always I see in forums everywhere, whether it's Facebook or whatever groups you're in, is how do you keep your hands warm when it's cold? Well, obviously good gloves are, are a great idea. I have probably spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars on gloves over the years and the only thing I have found that really works are heated grips and um, <laughs> if there's one pair of gloves you want to carry when it's cold, these guys. Good old fashioned deer skin insulated work gloves. Um, these are actually my son's, they're huge. These do not actually fit my hands, but they actually work well um, in colder temperatures like this. So, you know, if there's one thing that you're gonna carry for gloves, would be a lighter weight pair, like I mentioned, a mesh pair. I never personally ride without gloves. Um, I don't want my hands to get chapped or sunburned or, you know, I've seen enough where people have just had tip over spills or slow speed crashes and skinned up the palms of their hands and that hurts. So I don't really want to go there. But um, carry just a good pair of work gloves like this, deer skin insulated gloves and heated grips, unfortunately. But you got to keep the blood circulating in your hands or they're just going to get cold. I have purchased heated gloves before and for me they're just too bulky. I don't have enough dexterity to feel good operating the motorcycle. So these guys here. A um, couple of real simple things also you know and I know a lot of you probably don't ride in really cold temperatures. Um, I tend to be kind of a, a diehard when it comes to being the last out in the fall and the first out in the spring. I just love it and I don't mind being cold and bundled up but I found these um, on Amazon a couple of years ago they're just these fleecy lined neck gaiters and for me it's just enough that I can kind of tuck it up underneath of my helmet and it cuts all of that wind this one actually has um, what do you call them a chin guard underneath so that helps also but this has been a lifesaver many times and then of course just your good old neck buff you can pull it up over your nose that kind of thing um let's see oh i was going to take these out of the bag so i didn't crinkle a whole bunch but anyway we'll do it real quick <laughs> in this bag i also carry a whole huge mess of um bungee cords and bungee nets and all of that obviously that's not gear but it fits best in this bag um be careful when using bungee cords I'm probably gonna get some feedback about I shouldn't use those and I will admit I have had long trips where a bungee has come loose or I forgot to connect one and it's dangling precariously close to my belt or my tire and could have definitely spelled disaster so be careful about those I do have a few rock straps as well um, I tend to be a pack rat as you can see when I travel so I often carry a lot of extras when I travel long distance because inevitably 
you know, you repack your bags and something gets packed different. It just doesn't fit. You don't want to keep messing around with it. Um, or I've got friends that for whatever reason also need something to tie something down better. So I just tend to carry a bunch of them. I don't usually travel with that many, but uh, again, beginning of season, I've just thrown everything in my bags. All right, rain gear. Unfortunately, if you ride enough, you will ride in the rain. And um, <laughs> the running joke among my crew has been that if they ride with me, we will find rain even if there is none in the forecast. For some reason, I tend to just be a magnet for rainstorms. Um, I've actually worn out a couple of rain suits. Did you know that they are no longer waterproof after riding in the rain so many times? I learned that the hard way on a long trip where we were riding in a monsoon for what seemed like days. And uh, yeah, let's just say my butt got really wet and I was not expecting that. <laughs> so a good rain suit goes a long way. That's one that you definitely want to pay attention to if it is made for motorcycling. I've seen a lot of people buy just the really cheapy, you know, um, Fleet Farm or whatever it is that's that's the big, you know, like farmyard supplier near you. Um, and they either shred in the wind or they don't hold up to that level of just being impaled by rain. And the other big thing is the exhaust pipes. So many of these have little liners on the inside of the shins that help deflect that heat so that they're not going to melt right there. Um, whereas those other cheapy ones don't, and I've seen them melt to, to pipes quite a few times. So be sure to check on that. All right. The last little guy in this bag that, again, if there are, if there's one thing that you purchase for writing, that is kind of a universal help is something like this. And I will post a link for this because everyone I've ever shown it to just thinks it's like the most amazing thing ever. It was a cheap running jacket I got off of Amazon. And sometimes in the summers I go to events close to home that I end up riding home in the dark and I don't love riding in the dark. I like to be visible as much as I can. This jacket, I don't know if you can see it with the light, probably not. This entire jacket is reflective and you light up like the moon um, when there's headlights on you, whether it's a friend behind you on a bike or another car, there's no way anyone can miss you with this jacket on. It just glows. I think it was maybe 20 bucks on Amazon. And the cool thing is I got it a little bit big, so it fits over my leather jacket or whatever jacket I'm wearing. It's also water resistant. So if you do get caught in a little bit of rain, it's going to help repel that, but it's also an awesome windbreaker. I've worn this even during the day when it's just been really windy and cold and I just need that extra layer to cut the wind and keep my body heat in. So those are kind of the main things that I have found over the years. Again, I have an entire closet full of gear and I probably use maybe less than a third of it because they've just been things that trial and error over the years I have tried and Either they didn't work well, they didn't fit well, they didn't do what they were supposed to. Um, but those are those are kind of a couple of key things. So that jacket, a good neck buff, a nice layer, you know, an easy to wear layer, um, and then a rain suit and some good gloves. Those are probably the five things that you should carry on you at all times, all riding season if you can. So anyway. That's what I've got in bag number one. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this video and uh, leave me some comments. What are the things and brands that you have found that really offer a good range of products for both men and women? And um, what other companies have you found that do a good job of representing those brands? So thanks and we'll see you soon.